Hey, how's it going? So I'm back at my shop again today. So I got some buddies on their way over here. I told them there's a big cheeseburger picnic there, so uh, they shouldn't be too much longer. But anyways, I'm going to get working on this again today. Uh, get it all stripped down to pieces. So uh, I'm just waiting for them to come. I got to get this big uh, nut off there for the flywheel. It's like two and one eighth inch or like, I think it's like 52 or 53 millimeter, but I'm going to break that loose. Uh, I just need them to hold the engine and stuff there and then uh, can flip it on its back and uh, get the hub bolt loose there and uh, take off the front cover and all the stuff underneath there so as soon as they show up we should be able to get started on that yeah so we got this loose it took the two of us holding it and one of us freaking cracking it down so now I got my buddies here to help me it's no cheeseburger picnic though eh? No. <laughs> <You're weird. laughs> yeah and then uh, we've just got this one loose there so I'm just going to take off the flywheel and then uh, pop it up on its back there and uh, take off the front cover. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, gurgle, gurgle. Oh, yeah, it's coming in. Good. Oh. <laughs> we got a little on this side too. <laughs> yeah, let's get some of the Fuck, Frig's sake. Coming out that one. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> Only thing a Timmy's cup is good for. Yeah, so I got her on her side now. I'm just taking off like the engine mounts and stuff there. I forgot to tell you guys, like these things, you have to pretty much heat them up there, because uh, they have the like the red Loctite on them there. So you, you have to heat it up and uh, so you can break that loose. Like it took the three of us like quite a bit of freaking effort there just to get it loose, but she's all loose now. So I'm just taking off the engine mounts, got those off, but uh, I'm gonna take the oil pan off. Than the front cover. All right, so I got all the bolts out for the oil pan and the engine mounts off there. So these things you gotta just be kind of careful because they're only like a thin stamp steel. So like, just find like a spot around here. Like you can usually find one like this. See how there's like this little uh, lip there on the actual casting of the metal. But like just kind of like lightly pry it apart, and then you just have to pretty much work your way all the way around the oil pan, like. You don't want to bend it out too hard and uh, end up like warping the pan or anything there. So I'm just going to kind of work away at that real quick. So just hold on a second. You see, I already got it started on this one here. So just going lightly, just like wiggling enough to like break the seal a little bit in front there, move over, and uh, keep doing the same thing. So a good tool to have is like something like this and then like a little screwdriver or something. Yeah, so pretty much it's a little bit at a time. Yeah, because uh, they use the silicone on these. That's what I'll be using when I put it back in, though, so it's not like this bad thing. Right, so there, just slowly worked my way around, and then it finally just popped off there, so no matter how hard you try like you can never get all the oil out of the oil pan there so I had some absorb all down there ready to go but still some right there on the pallet freaking uh, I'll just wait till it's a uh, part there to put some more down there so I don't get any uh, absorb all inside like any parts that it shouldn't be in there so I don't know I'm just gonna take off like the feed tube thing there and uh, then take off the front cover yeah, so I got the oil feed tube there off, so I'm going to take off this hub, but uh, one thing you should make sure you do is, uh, like, it doesn't really matter when you're rebuilding the engine, but, like, if you ever have, like, a good engine and shit, you can't uh, loosen this bolt off unless, like, either the engine's up straight or uh, you have, like, the clutch depressed if it's in the car, just because, like, there's a little Torrington bearing in there, and it'll slide off and then uh, end up getting crushed, and then you'll freaking have a whole lot of problems after that, but... Like for right now, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just about to take this out. I just friggin' loosen it off. We cracked her loose earlier there, so you can see in here, freaking should be like the thermal pellet thing or majigger there. It's got a big bolt like that. A little copper washer in there. You have to replace after. Yeah, this is the thermal pellet. Like that. Uh, it's basically like a little thermostat for the engine oil there. So. It won't start putting oil through like the oil friggin feed on the 
eccentric shaft there until it like hits a certain temperature like that's why at idle and stuff you guys would always see my oil pressure like really low but they have like a modified part it's just basically like a machine piece of aluminum the shape of that that just goes in there so you get full oil pressure like all the time yeah so you just stick your finger down in the eccentric shaft there should be able to use your pinky to hook on the spring there like that so uh, there we go that stuff's all out yeah so this hub can come off now so I'm gonna have to use both my hands there there's a little keyway in there so it takes a little bit of uh, messing around to get it off alright so I got that front hub out there and I got all the bolts out for the front cover there so I'm just about to pop this loose so just give her some wiggles and it should just come loose there you go alright so now that the front Oh, it covers off you can see like this is the oil pump and the oil pump like drive gear there and This is for like the timing freaking thing of a jigger there, but then like, the front counterweight so uh, they, like pretty much I just have to Get this little lock washer down there and take this off and This stuff all should just slide up, but uh then take that off and I can take the oil pump off and all the stuff that's under there like the Torrington bearings and spacer and uh all that other good stuff and then should be like all ready to go for like the disassembly alright so I took off that crush washer there for uh, you know, I got that nut off and then I took off that drive gear for the pretty, pretty much distributor thing there but uh, I don't know I'm just about to slide this off when you're doing this though there's a little keyway in there you have to be really careful you don't lose it because you'll be screwed because you won't have any oil pressure when you go to rebuild it so usually like, once I get it out set it aside and then uh, when I'm rebuilding my engine I crazy glue them in there because you have kind of a pain trying to get all this stuff lined up and like get it afterwards so as soon as you take this off get that keyway like right away because it'll pop out and you'll freaking lose it so give me a second here yeah so it's this little keyway right here so don't want to lose that thing set it somewhere safe now that you got the oil chain and uh, drive gear there to place there, you can pretty much slide up this counterweight. There's a little spacer in there, it usually doesn't come out. It's kind of hard to get it into, so I'll just set it in my box here. Now you can see the, this is the first Torrington bearing right in there, so see that right here. Now you see the tip of the spacer there, and there's another. Uh, Keyway, so I take that out and set it somewhere safe too. I just got it all these things here. Yeah, so next is all uh, these bolts here, I guess, to take off. So once you get off that little cover, you can get this spacer out. These things, they're all uh, marked. This is a C, but uh, they're different sizes. So this is what you use to like set the sh end shaft play or whatever when you're done rebuilding it. So I don't know. I'd have to check to see what size like a C is, but uh, I don't know. So you have the second uh, little Torrington bearing there. So set that aside too. Put your spacer in there, and then uh, there should be one more little right in here might need a screwdriver or something to get this one out I guess yeah carefully pry it up so you can get it with your fingers uh. 
I don't have any fingernails. I'll come back to that one after. So yeah, just get off. Uh, once you have those off, pretty much just take off the oil pump here. So oil pump right in here. So here's the, I'm just gonna take off the oil pump right now. So just these two. I like to break them all loose first. Usually they don't come apart like that, but it's no problem. <laughs> I'll show you guys a little trick I learned how to get the flywheels off. So you just gotta give her a couple little good taps there. Like you're not just smashing on it, but uh, just enough to like kind of shock it there off of there. So. Yeah, so there you go. Bam, she's off. Just to give you guys like a size comparison for like the engine, like this is just like average size uh, welding helmet, but then you can see it's like basically the same length as the engine there. A little bit wider. Uh, yeah, they're pretty small once they're all freaking torn down. So I did a little bit of a modifying to my pallet there just so I could get the engine sitting up straight. I'm just working on getting all the tension bolts out here. so. I got them all cranked loose and I just gotta loosen them all off and then I can start disassembling the engine there so I don't know there, there's a special sequence you gotta look at the service manual there just uh, to crack them loose there so I'll get those out and I'll set the camera up so uh, videotape it all getting disassembled alright so I got the tension bolts all out and I took the keyway out of the, the centric shaft there so I gave her a little couple little hits with uh, the rubber mount there so this rear iron should be able to just pop right off now hopefully yeah there we go just take it off slow there see the see right here this is pretty common with uh, like engines that are almost like freaking wore out there you see how the like oil control ring here it's stuck right to the thing so uh, that's not a good sign but like it's nothing bad really one of the side seals stuck right to it too so I don't know I'll get working back on this here yeah so you wanna just be careful you don't lose any of the seals I'll put the side seal back in here Yeah, just try to grab as many of the seals as you can as you pull it out. They all fall out there. So I'm going to be replacing them anyway, so it's not like crucial that they stay in all the same spots. It would have just been nice. <laughs> yeah, so next I just got to get uh, this housing off the dowels here. So I'll try to pull them out. Yeah, so I had to give this a couple little taps too, just to break the old coolant seals there. So, just to slide the rotor housing off. So this housing looks, it's actually in like really good shape. So, set this one aside here. Make sure it stays safe. Set my dowels in there. So old coolant seal there. So uh, this one's a little bit tricky, especially by yourself. So. Just gonna have to break the seals loose here. So. so I got this cracked loose now. This one's a little bit tricky because I have to uh, lift it up like while lifting the crankshaft, the centric shaft up there. So just give me a second.
Yeah, so here's the one that was blown. So I'm just checking it over right now. Freaking oil comes all out of it. I'll get you guys a close up look after. So I'll set this one aside there. Just basically get this dowel out here. Corners here and stuff. Again, I gotta separate these. All right, so now I just have to like pop off this last rotor housing. So you can just get it in here with your uh, thing there, just to pop her loose. So yeah, this will just pop right off. This is the one that's wrecked. So I'll show you guys the damage afterwards there. Yeah, so there you go. So this is the last piece, just the front iron. So she's disconnected now. So just gotta uh, start cleaning and uh, porting and all that. Yeah, so there you go guys, I got it all disconnected there, I had to check over my eccentric shaft, I kind of banged it there, so it's not the best way to take that out, that's for sure, but uh, I don't know, she's apart, there's no real marks there, so uh, I'll show you guys the damage there, there's the good housing and center iron over there, so you guys don't get confused or nothing, but you can see, this it kind of sucks, this was a good housing there, but uh, you can see all this gouging and stuff there. So it would have been in pretty good shape if not, like the other one's like almost perfect too. So see like right in there, it started just chewing it up there. But this is the blown rotor. This is the one face here. You can see like the center's gone. There's a big chunk like right in there. It's freaking uh, was gonna break there. Cause it's just the one seal. This seal popped out. You can see like kind of it's V-shaped at the top there. So it got rocking back and forth and uh, popped out and took out the other seals there so this is the last one there's the little chip in the corner there but got oil on my hand <laughs> anyways like the bearings and stuff look good so pretty much I'm just gonna have to get uh, use one of my other uh, rotor housings and rotor so it's not too bad but uh, I'm just gonna get uh, cleaning up on this stuff and uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, video so I don't know until the next one I should be uh, starting cleaning everything so I'll talk to you guys later